So it's 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 quite the uh, it's quite the compendium. And uh, the thought was, how do we organize this material? It is it is basically chronological. Uh, the intent was, a lot of new readers don't know where to go next, um, and so so the, this this tells you what to read next in sequence. But it's not in rigid chronological order. It's more suggested reading. It, it takes into account um, things like, you know, if you're going rigid chronological order, you would read the first few chapters of I, Jedi, then jump to well, one of the books in the Jedi Academy trilogy, then jump back to I, Jedi, and then continue here. We weren't interested in doing that kind of thing because we don't think that's a very good reading experience. Those two series are put back to back, but it's recommended that you read Jedi Academy Trilogy first because I, Jedi gives up the story of Jedi Academy Trilogy and I, Jedi was written with the assumption that most people would have read Jedi Academy Trilogy first, that that information was known. Same thing with Darth Plagueis. Darth Plagueis, for instance, spans a large period of time. We made the editorial decision to put it in the companion where the story ends and not where the story begins. The reasoning being is that it really gives up the story of episode one and other material and we thought it would be better to experience those first stories, get that story, and then circle back with Darth Plagueis. So that's some of the rationale between the sequencing and the order of the material. Art. So, Eric, do you have a number of the illustrations that are in this book to hold? I think we committed, I'm mean, not counting all the, all the covers, we commissioned about 150 to 160 original pieces of art for this. And the idea was to depict scenes, but we know that there are a lot of characters that people are interested in, and so we thought that in addition to supplementing scenes, we would do individual character portraits, much like was, was done in the new essential chronology. Uh, but what's interesting is here is that we collected the portraits at the start of each chapter, uh, so you get this almost yearbook page of certain characters that are influential to the era, or just highlighted for the era, just, you know, help represent the era, and then you move into the, the sort of plot-based illustrations. So this is actually, uh, this is Amir Geff, and all the portraits in the book are painted by Brian Rood, mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, he's got a big booth down there in artist style. <coughs> Here's a lot of with Anji. Couldn't do one without the others. Who does not want a baby next to me? <laughs> and while on the subject of little cuddly furries, uh, <laughs> wind door pocket. <laughs> this originally came in without pocket, and we're like, you gotta have pocket. Yeah, all of us <laughs> collectively, Pablo, myself, Jen Heddle, and Leland, we were all like, where's pocket? So, and luckily, Brian had painted him just standing like this. And so I'm like, Brian, you know, just put him right there, just leave the fist. Just, and he's like nibbling like a little, little, little snack between the fingers. <laughs> Here we go. Um, this is uh, Cal Owens. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cal Owens. <laughs> there, were, there were a lot of questions on the Facebook page as to whether he would really appear in this book or not. So, yes. I specifically chose this to mention that he could be in the book. If there's anybody out there who still likes me, I'll confess this that I pleaded with Pablo and Arish to show him from the back or like behind him. <laughs> <laughs> And because they're much better people than I am, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, funny story on this one, just real quick. Um, he has a very kind of generic description. Um, and the whole t I'm trying to put together a reference for Brian for it. And I just kept thinking John Slattery from Mad Men. But, you know, he can't use that because he's a young guy. And I'm sitting there at my desk, like... Just looking through like random images and stuff, and I look up, and one of our printer sales reps just happens to show up at the booth. And I look up, and I'm like, It's Cal <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, Do you want to be a Star Wars character? <laughs> um, so, so these are the portraits, and in addition to the portraits, we have scenes. And while in addition to writing the book, I would often write really extensive descriptions of the artist and what scene I thought really jumps out of, of, the, of the novel in question. And in some cases, I would just get frustrated with writing. It's like, you know what? Let me sketch it. How about this scene? Um, so here's an example of something that actually didn't end up in the book, but I would do this from time to time. I would do really rough sketches to describe what a scene I had in mind that might represent the book. 
So this is from Deceived, and it's, it's Malgus um, disposing of uh, his beloved. Um, but we ultimately decided not to use this for a variety of reasons, one of which, you know, in the, in the truth... Yeah, we just spoiled the ending of the book. Uh, so for new readers browsing through it, we thought, well, maybe that's a little too, a little too intense, a little too disruptive. So. Uh, so we ended up choosing, and you've probably seen this online, it's a different scene from the scene of, uh, that Chris Travis did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the scene right here. So it was of, um, of Z-Man and uh, Air Lanier, um, Air Lanier uh, skydiving from the exploding Fat Man ship over Coruscant. And I don't know if Chris, this was by your I don't know if there's anything you want to add to it. <laughs> it's fun to draw exploding ship. <laughs> <laughs> No, the, the piece was a lot of fun uh, playing around with the perspective, and yeah, obviously the explosion I had a lot of fun with that. Um, it's very, very uh, action movie. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, yeah. she's all calm, and Z Man's back there kind of screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another one of my rough sketches of, of what I imagine when reading Night Errant, and it's uh, Kara Holt with the, uh, in front of one of the Selagians that is helping me. Helping to make this kind of mind control network on one of our planets, in the, one of the Sith control planets, and this one actually did end up in the book. And it was it was Jeff Carlyle who, uh, who who ran with my sketch and, and executed this amazing piece. The funny thing is, I never saw Pablo's sketch. <laughs> <laughs> so look at that. We both we both thought this is how you compose that scene. Well, this is how we designed the chess clock craft, but we won't get into that. <laughs> That's true. We, uh, um, it's another story. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I was looking at it as I wanted the character to look very much like she did in the comics, and I wanted to also kind of play around with style a little bit. I didn't want it to look, you know, so much like some of the stuff that I'd done before, and I kind of hit on the idea that maybe it was going to be kind of almost like an animation style. I wanted it to, like, the backgrounds to kind of feel a little separate from the characters, and I don't know, you know, Pablo's art notes were so specific that it was like I, I could see it in my head immediately based on what he was doing. That's a great piece. Yeah. Uh, here, another one from Chris. This is from um, uh, uh, Shadowhunter. Maul with Darsha uh, fighting in the uh, industrial areas of, of Coruscant. Yeah, that was a really fun background to, background to do. I just kind of winged it looking at a lot of industrial things and yeah, I, guess I think the description said something similar to like the deep power generator room. Mm -hmm. Wanted to get that feel of you know, electricity and power running through it. Uh, here's a fun one. <laughs> this is Plagueis being attacked by the assassins at their sort of order of the secret circle or, or whatever. Order of the camp camp circle, his secret society. Um, yeah, and this was a challenge because the among the things that the novel really describes it in a rather bloody fashion and, and you know, for reasons of taste and other considerations, we didn't want to be that graphic in this book. But at the same time, we wanted to capture that desperation and feel and also the power of playing this. So. I like to assume that the side of his face you can't see is, you know, all mangled. And, <laughs> and this is by Chris Scalp, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I, just love yeah, I think I drove Chris crazy with this one because I nitpicked this one like crazy. <laughs> Um, but I, we finally got it, and I think it's a fantastic piece. There's another one by Travis. This is from Labyrinth of Evil, the, the Jedi trying to shuttle Chancellor um, uh, Palpatine's safety during the attack on Coruscant. And Grievous shows up. So it's a little bit, it incorporates Labyrinth and incorporates a little bit of the micro series that, that plays a similar scene. But um, yeah, this is this picture. I feel self explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> This one is a particular favorite of mine. Woo! I make no secret my love for the Brian Daly books. They are my favorite of the bunch. And uh, what I wanted was, I, I, call it, I call it a posed publicity shot. If there was a, if there was a movie of this, this is one of the, the, the photos that would end up in the publicity key set that would be sent to Entertainment Weekly if I put this movie in. Yes. So, Young Han, and I made in my notes, and I know Chris is a Han fan, so he wouldn't do this. I said, don't put the scar in. doesn't have the scar yet. Uh, Chewy and uh, Bollocks and Blue Max. This is interesting. We, we, we puzzled over how to depict the movie novelizations because they were so important. We wanted to have them in there, but we didn't want to make scenes that were absolutely redundant to what was in the content of the film. 
And one idea that was tossed about, like, what, what if we use the concept version of characters and scenes? But we didn't think that that, that would work too well because they would, it would sort of like, um, it would sort of confusion as to whether or not what the characters really look like and what do these drawings represent. So what I had suggested is we do scenes that aren't in the movie but were like almost just in the movie. You can imagine that they were there. And so this is just a few frames after Vader steps on the empty Obi-Wan uh, row. And just, you know, imagine you pick it up and, and contemplate what he's... He's well, just picked and, up. And also after the Falcon has left, too. Because yeah. the blast doors closed, and Jeff's argument was, well, they opened the blast doors back up again after the Falcon left. So. <laughs> yep. Other, otherwise, it's just you know, Darth Vader with you know, like a gray background behind him. <laughs> yeah. And it'd be like black on gray. <laughs> so, no, yeah. Here's a good one. <laughs> this is from Tales from Los Isaac Cantina. This is Melma and Aegon being uh, basically picked on by a big bully of Imperial Officer in his greenhouse. And I found out after the fact that Jeff had a little bit of fun with Easter eggs in this one, so I'm going to let him tell you about that a little bit. Yeah, I, uh, I have this habit of putting Easter eggs in my illustrations, so uh, right, by, right behind me you'll see these two little tall yellow plants, those are triffids. Uh, yes. And then under, at the base of the turpid underneath his elbow, you'll see young Audrey too. <laughs> and then next to the other turpid on the inside, you'll see what is a giant seed pod, and that's from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> now actually behind him, behind him uh, and I will we'll always call him Hammerhead, uh, sure. these are some trees which are based on some things that Ralph Macquarie designed. And then on the other end, you'll see a gigantic plant, and that was uh, some, from one of the Ithorian illustrations for uh, Guy Dalian species, I think. It was actually Chris's yeah. illustration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one from Mara fans. This is from Allegiance. And this is basically Mara telling Darth Vader that these guys, the, the Hand of Judgment Sword Troopers, they're with me. So uh, this was a fun piece of drama. Uh, this is by Darren Tan. Darren Tan's, I, I was introduced to Darren Tan's artwork through this book, and I am absolutely amazed by it. Every time Eric sent me a piece of Darren Tan's art, I could not shut up about it. Great piece. And the thing is, like, we would see it in pencil or, or just black and white stay, and, you know, he, he had it in, in that black and white state. So he captured everything that we see here, and it was just really exciting to see. Another one by Chris. <laughs> This is not so much a direct uh, scene in the novel, but we just wanted to capture an idea that's in the novel, that Han Solo's hunt for Zinj represented him sort of legitimately being in a military role again. And we thought at some point, perhaps he, he donned the general's outfit during that hunt. Well, and the helmsman looks kind of familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Now, an interesting story, I didn't catch that in the sketch. So when he sent the color piece through, I looked at it and I'm like, what? <laughs> so I emailed him back and I'm like, what is going on here? The last time I saw that guy, he was losing his starship to somebody in the game of Hollow Chess, the Atlas book. <laughs> Very interesting backstory. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but Leland says if he has a name, I'll be able to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to Shelley about that and make sure we do it. <laughs> you may have seen this one online. This is also this is by Dan as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is from uh, Courtship of Princess Leia. Uh, yeah, I'm just a huge fan of this place. It's a great place. Uh, Luke and, and Daniel coming first contact basically in the ruins of the Chuanthorpe. What's interesting is that in the sketch for this, the only note I get back is in the sketch for this, uh, he had drawn the loop with his glove on, and we had sent some emails back and forth. It's like, guys, how many years has it been since he got shot in the hand? Why would he keep wearing that one glove? I don't think he's doing that. <laughs> well, I think that it was either two gloves or no gloves. Yeah, that was, the, that was my feedback. Two gloves or no gloves. But no one glove. He's not rocking that look anymore. <laughs> Oh, I love this piece. <laughs> I absolutely love this piece because of all the emotion and expression and anguish that are on the faces of those poor saps. Uh, <laughs> this is Admiral Dalla basically getting rid of the incompetency of the uh, Imperial Warlords and Darksaber. <laughs> fun, fun scene. Also by Darren Dan. If only continuity could be simplified so easily. <laughs> <laughs> 
Here, we've seen a version of this, uh, similar to this, in the original uh, essential chronology. It was a black and white illustration. Um, but we, it's such a memorable and distinct scene that I wanted to see it kind of captured as, as full color and vividly. So this is Leia versus Beldorian, the splendid, the, the, the lightsaber-wielding hut from um, uh, Planet Twilight. And, you know, the thought is like, it's such a bizarre concept, it occurred to me that if it was ever rendered cinematically, they would make this hut giant, scary, and just like, if you really feel the mass, you really feel the threat of it. Yeah, I just told Chris Scott to just go crazy. Like, <laughs> look, he's got fangs, and just take <laughs> something just out of my orange. Yeah. <laughs> this one's by Jeff. This is from uh, Scourge, uh, meeting, uh, meeting the huts. All I was going to say is like, you know, it's, it's a spaceship, it's supposed to be resplendent, but they're also huts. So it's going to be, it's going to be kind of cavernous and going kind of like, it's going to be what's comfortable to huts. And then, you know, and we all know that Twi'lek uh, slight girls are very comfortable to huts as well. But one of the things that I like doing is I threw in versions of the uh, bas, bas relief from uh, Java's sail bars. And, you know, the kind of the way that I justified it was like, well, you know, maybe this was a gift from Java a long time ago. And it's got chunks of these. <laughs> Just know what it is. Here we go, the uh, Young Jedi Knights. During, uh, well, <laughs> when, during, before, before things really fell apart. Well. <laughs> so again, one of these kind of group publicity skills, we, we sometimes do that to encapsulate a series rather than picking one single moment from the story because it allows us to get all the characters in there and it allows you to, to kind of fill in, fill in the scenes in your mind once, once we kind of argue with what the characters look like and remind you of where they were at that time. There's an interesting story about this. This one went on, online recently and it, it's Mara uh, versus a Yuzan Vong infiltrator, a young car at the Belkadian outpost and he's throwing thug bugs at her, she's blocking And uh, this is by Derek Tan, and, and we posted this online, and Derek's got some interesting feedback. Yeah, we uh, gave it to Club Jade to put up. It's pretty big more Jade fans, and I thought they'd get a kick out of it. And, uh, you know, everybody loved it, but we started getting comments about what lightsaber is she using, because it's not Anna Kemmer Luke's, and it's not the new one she built. Um, Darren had just painted kind of a generic lightsaber hilt on it. And Darren actually saw the comments and emailed me back. And at this point, like, the book was done. It was at the printer. Darren emailed me. He's like, I really need to fix this lightsaber. I'm like, all right, fine. You've got 24 to 48 hours to get it done. Or we're not we're going to get too late. So we went with uh, Anakin slash Luke's original lightsabers. We've already done the blue blade. And we just wanted to show this to you that yes, we listen to the fans and you know this we made the correction, so this is how it will look in the book. Ah, this just brings us back. Anakin and Tahiri's first kiss. Um, illustration from uh, from from the key series from the New Jedi Order. And I he just thought this this is just a scene I wanted to capture. The inclination often when describing scenes, it's like, oh, how about this action scene? This, how about this action scene? And then I realized, well, no, there, there are other moments that we really want to capture this as well. So it was, it was a challenge to find this balance. And uh, so it's not all lightsaber wielding action scenes. Um, we, we sometimes show some of the softer, more tender moments. We've got Luke and Mara, Anakin, Tahiri, and Jin and Jack. Yeah, there's some smooches in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Caroni uh, joined us um, in the project as well, and this is the well the assassination or attempted or well assassination of, of Thrak and Sal Solo um, from the Lexi of the Force series with Fett, uh, Murda, and, and basically an uh, uh, older Han donning Mandalorian armor for this purpose. So, so there's a there's a basically a run through the, the timeline of Star Wars novels visually depicted. And of course, this is just the start. There, there are many, many more illustrations in the book. Um, we could go back to the uh, initial, just the logo now, because I think that's the last piece of the yeah, book. Here. Yeah, so. so there you go. A little quick <laughs> cheer. You know, I think at this stage, we just uh, want to open this up to questions. Yeah, yeah, we have like 10 or so minutes. Yeah, so we've got a microphone up here. I'm sure you folks have a lot of questions about these books, and uh, we welcome them. So. 
Please don't be shy. Yes, please. Hi, Papa. You had told me to ask this question today, so I'm gonna. Uh, in one of the essential guys, you see a picture of more and more from about chest up. Looks like he's wearing tradition, traditional green Jedi robes. And you said that it looks like he was. And I, and I asked, is there any chance we could get a full body shot picture of him wearing the uh, green traditional Jedi robes? So the question is, what would you know? What would Cornhorn look like from head to toe? Because the one that's I, did you do that, Chris? And one of the guys. And one of the guys we have a portrait shot of him, possibly. And one of the guys we have a portrait shot of him, but not the full body shot. Uh, do we have a full body shot of Corn? Well, I took a picture of him in the robes to get it done for the full body shot for character. So. I wish you knew it was done, but I said something to him when I was wearing it. <laughs> so it looks like we will be seeing Excellent. Corn from head to toe and judge whether or not the custom is accurate. So. And talking about the horns, can we get a picture of uh, Valen and Gisela? Uh, yeah, I think possibly. I'm not. I'm not positive that it's going to be in characters, but we're also working on our Saludo.com site to do stuff that profiles some other things that don't necessarily characters and scenes that are linked into the book. So, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Are you going to make an updated version of Essential Five to um, reading companions? Because of New books are coming out? So, updating the essential readers. Um, I just finished it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even on sale yet. Yeah, um, but that, that is a good question. It does go all the way to the end of 2012. So, um, when it comes out, it'll have Annihilation in it, it'll have Scoundrels in it. It won't be a full synopsis of those books, but they are represented in there. And we didn't want to spoil those books by the guide coming out first. Um, we are looking at ways of, of keeping it updated, different different ways to, to add to the text, but um, you know th this version is going to live for a while. Uh, but we did find out, you know, we tried to go through the end of 2012, including anticipating future insider stories. But there is one story that's going to come out before years end that did not make it into the book because we only just found out about it yeah. just now. And it's, it's Timothy Zahn's e-books uh, or e-story that's that's coming out. So. Yeah. Just one more question. Yeah. Um, are we going to see the um, Avabot um, infesting anyone in the um, essential guide? Like? No, we did not illustrate Avabot for, for, she will be in characters, but she's not in Reader's Companion. Thank you. She was in Warfare Origin. Yeah. yeah. She was in Warfare Origin. The kind of Calista version of her was. I kind of made a, a deliberate choice on that too. So. Yeah. Uh, just to clarify, um, with uh, Doug's project, that is the character, the artwork for the character guy is not a separate project, right? Right, right. that right. project that we're so always hinting at is this essential character. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. You have already said that you are working on your character essential. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's the third version of uh, essentials character. Do you plan on releasing new versions of other essentials? Like vehicles, species, so with characters, we're, we're, we're basically going back to one of the new essential guides and updating it as we're planning to do that for any of the other ones. We're, we're talking about it and, and we're thinking about it, but no definitive decisions have been made yet. One, one more question. Uh, is there a chance we could get uh, essential to Star Wars Underworld? Because there are so many influential organizations it's something that I'd really like to do, and again, that's another book that we've been talking about for a while. So, no, nothing definitive on that right now, but you know, keep keep following us on the Facebook page and stuff, and hopefully, we'll be doing that. Book. Thank you. Pablo, you kind of stole my thunder with the Jedi Prince series announcement. <laughs> I was going to ask about that. Um, backup question: Mercy Kill. Is there any art for that? In particular, a certain dance scene. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did not do the, 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 dancing. the dancing, but there is a portrait of Bindi. Yes. Thank you. And the thing with Mercy Kill was, you know, that we didn't have the manuscript yet when we were working on this. That was one of the last pieces that Pablo wrote in the book, so we were a little bit of this to be an art for. Yeah, 
and that was, I, I read basically the, what you had, the electronic version of it. Yeah. That was the last one that came in. It was, I remember I was reading it over Memorial Day weekend um, as fast as possible. <laughs> the, Frank's not here, Frank Parisi's not here, because if he was, he would force me to tell this story. I would have to read so much. No, Frank is, so is he here. Back there. All right, well, I'm telling the story for you, Frank. I would read, have to read so much because my intent was to read everything before putting it into the book. And um, to do that, I would I stopped uh, carpooling and started taking the bus so that it would be a longer ride to get to work to allow me the time to read this stuff. So I would read nonstop, and Frank would see me on the bus, and I'd be like, "No, I can't talk to you right now, Frank. I'm too busy." And and uh, there was one time he saw me, and I was absolutely relieved. I had gotten to the point in the timeline where I was reading the daily books and I was so grateful that I was on to 180 page novels for a change. Um, but also I would get the audio book 